Hi, um, I'm going to show you quickly how to frame uh, one of my tile pieces since I just did a, posted a video on making a tile piece. Um, so I've got a, a little display here that I'm going to show you and then you can see how to put tiles on a board and frame them. Okay, so I have a frame made out of barn wood. I like barn wood because it's an old Nova Scotia thing here. So, um, uh, and I have a piece of board that I cut to actually fit in the back of the barn board. Um, let's see if I can get that through there. All right, so it basically slots in the back and um, which I'll use nails or staples to actually fasten in once the thing is in there. Uh, so you've got to make sure this is this right size, obviously. I then paint the edge of the barn board using acrylic paint. Um, you could use any stain, whatever you feel like doing actually. So, but, um, but I leave an area in the center where I'm going to glue um, free of paint because, um, you know, paint can actually uh, peel after time and, you know, I guess painters who would do you know, fine art painting would hate to think about that, but paint does actually peel if the board gets a little damp with humidity, just to get rid of any brush strokes. Um, so I spray a little bit of water in here, just so this brush doesn't get dry. We'll leave it now for about an hour. Okay, I decided um, to scrap the back side of this because of that scratch that was there and start the other side. And so I've done this, the first coat on the other side. So this is the second coat. You always seem to need two coats with this uh, acrylic paint just to make sure you've got a nice coverage. And that scratch would have bugged me like crazy if I'd gone ahead and used that side, but, but this side is clean. No scratches. And so with two coats on this now, it'll take another hour to dry, and then I can glue the board, the tile onto the board. Just make sure your brush strokes are as covered as you can. Okay, the card, um, not the card, the board has been drying for uh, overnight basically, and I actually gave it a third coat. Um, to actually uh, get it really dense, and now I've got to be careful not to get it dirty. The glue that I use, which I recommend, uh, is this two-part epoxy, which dries in five minutes, um, and I always let it dry for a good couple of hours before I'm secure with it. Um, but all it is, it's two parts, equal amounts. Um, one's a, a resin and the other's a hardener. Um, and it's made by Lepage. It says professional speed set epoxy. And is it going to come out? Sometimes it's so thick you can't get it out. But oh, there you go, there's one of them anyway. And the other one's playing a bit of a. Yeah, it is. It's just sometimes it's just so hard. There you go. But equal amounts. So, and I put piles on. That is enough to hold a car together, probably. But um, they used to advertise this stuff when it first came out, with uh, gluing a piece of metal with on the end of a crane to the top of a car and picking the car up. But you're supposed to mix it for one minute. And the only reason, I glue it in the center and not at the corners um, because the tile um, is rigid obviously, but wooden boards can actually bend or warp depending on humidity. Um, and I started using, when I first did this, just half inch plywood thinking it would be so much stronger. But when there was some bending and in humidity, uh, I actually had a couple of tiles crack. Um, and um, so I thought, well, you know, that's because the wood's bending. Um, and uh, I then went to the quarter inch Luan, which is quite bendable, but it's not strong. 
so if it actually uh, does bend at all, it's not strong enough, the tile actually holds it flat. And then I discovered that if I just glue the center of the tile, you don't get any of that pulling. It's actually going to uh, literally just hold the tile in the middle, which this area, of course, doesn't bend any thing at all. It's just the corners that can literally bend up a little bit. So then you take your tile and you simply try to get some of this stuff in the center of the tile so they've got glue on the board and also yeah, so it's in two places basically and that way you've got and the tile will actually allow the glue to sink down underneath to the board anyway but you've got a round blob there, so it's a good idea to do that. Make sure the surfaces are totally clean, so there's no dust. And these just came out of a kiln, so there should be nothing on them. Um, and then you can place it down. And you've got to try and guess this and put a weight on it now. So, so I know this looks scary, but I got the, the wheel underneath and the tile on the top with 25 pounds of clay sitting on top of it. Um, so just something heavy um, that you can make sure the tile isn't going to move and, and it pushes the center of the tile down towards the wooden board anyway. Um, and then this whole thing just sort of flattens out this wooden board. Um, and I have that wheel underneath which doesn't go to the edges anyway. So. Uh, and I leave that for a couple of hours um, so that it can actually set slowly, although it should be set in five to ten minutes. Hi, I'm ready to put the frame together now, but I wanted to show you this first. This is a frame that's meant for two tiles, um, and uh, so that, you know, there's the back of it there with a little L shape cut out um, so you can put the board in that area there. Um, so this basically just slots right in. Just make sure I've got the right piece of wood for this one. So, and then you, I will nail some nails to hold that in. Um, but basically, if you're going to do a double or a triple or a quadruple, you have to paint the blue paint where the tiles will meet in the center going down as well. So I usually put like an inch and a half paint strip all the way down wherever the tiles meet. Uh, that way I've got a little leeway when I glue them down, um, leaving a bare piece of board in the center. Um, but, uh, but that's just something else I wanted to show you because it's, uh, it's just a matter of, you know, if this could be a triptych or it could be just two tiles, I would have a band of blue down in one or two places. I'm just showing you that. We have an ice storm going on outside at the moment. Um, so it basically means it's raining and it's freezing, so it'll pre it just builds up on the trees and the, and the road, makes it very slippery. Uh, so this hasn't been nailed in yet, but there's the single frame. So basically I've got my little L shape cut out. Um, you need, if you're going to be making frames, I do these on a, a sort of a table saw and just cut out the L shape if you want to make your own frames. But you can just buy these frames at the local frame shops but it costs a lot more. But, uh, but I just make these from barn wood that I get, um, and, uh, or just wood on my own buildings that I take off and I feel like I want to use it for a frame if it's nice enough anyway. So this is what it looks like glued down. This has been sitting, actually I've left it for a couple of days, but um, there's the back that I left open. Now I have to uh, just basically check it, make sure it's clean, I usually sign on the piece of board here. I can do that after it's in the frame anyway. Um, and I also sign on the back. So, um, so you've got two, re two ways of doing it. But literally, it's so easy. You just make sure you cut your wood the right size, of course. Take a look, and this looks like it's fairly level. Um, you've got, it, if your frame is a little loose, which I like to do in case it's, I don't want it too tight for sure. I place it over and I turn it over so it doesn't move. Then put it back. See, I gave myself plenty of place where it can move. So I would make sure it's level on the inside. And then I just use pin nails. These are like very thin finishing nails. 
making sure the board doesn't move. You can also use a frame master sort of regular framing tool, but you know, if you're just doing one of these, you don't want to have to invest in a tool like that. You don't want to go all the way down in case you have to take it out again. So I've done the three on the one side. I'm going to do another one on one and then I'll take a look at it and see if it's level. It's, it's still parallel. So it should now hold. Take a look. Probably could touch over just a tiny bit. There you go. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to turn it back over. Make sure I'm looking at that right. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it to go down. I think it's down. It needs to go down. There you go. Move there. Take another look. Yep, that's better now. And then you can put your last nails in. By hammering, I couldn't move it, you see, so. But it's easy to adjust, that's why I'm not putting the nails in very far. And that's it. This is a barn wood framed piece. Um, I like barn wood because it's the uh, history of our area. Um, this is a very old historic building for a start. My building is 120 years old and I actually used the barn wood off my own building for the first few years until it ran out. Um, but I think that um, I just love history and this piece, you know, these pieces of wood are old. So um, you've got knots in them, you've got wormholes and whatever else. And I clean it up, of course. I don't leave it totally rotten. I don't want to, I want it to last. And you can actually run a, a, a sort of satin clear varnish over the whole thing if you want to. I don't bother with that because it gives it a bit of a sheen, gives it a different look. But, um, but there you go. That's how to frame a piece of uh, tile work, which is uh, uh, Ramona in Germany is going to be framing the one up. I just mailed to Germany, so thanks, Ramona. Okay, this is what I mean by a little gap between each tile if you're doing a multiple tile piece um, so that you don't have um, any chance that wood can expand or shrink and cause compression on the edge of the tile and crack it. So you just need to leave, I'll get as close as I can. It's just a tiny little gap. It's probably an eighth of an inch. Um, and it goes all the way down between the tiles. So just find your closest point and try and position the tiles so that those close points are about an eighth of an inch across. And that, and that way you never have to risk it cracking the edge of the tile.